Hello, my name is Ilmar Wikström and welcome to my master's thesis presentation. The topic of my master's thesis is deep reinforcement learning approach for heating, ventilation and air conditioning control. The presentation is separated into six different parts. Uh, in the introduction section, we are going to start with the motivation of the work why this is important issue and what we are going to do in this work. In the background section, we are going to take a look at the relevant infrastructure built and also the relevant modules that are used in this uh, work. In experiment setup section, we are going to lay out the algorithms. We are going to lay out the detailed view of the system and we are also going to lay out the experiments that are going to be run in the next section. Experiment section we are just going to conduct the experiments themselves and of course results are going to be addressed next and after that we are going to conclude this presentation. So let's start with the introduction. So according to United States Department of Energy, HVAC machinery accounts for roughly 20% of total energy consumption in the world. Now, this is a staggering number and definitely has an effect on the global carbon footprint. Now, there are multiple methods of addressing this and trying to minimize the energy consumption, one of which is just try to make the machinery more efficient. And the other way is to try to control them in a way which results in uh, minimized energy consumption. In this work, we are going to focus on the control methods. Now, traditionally, the HVAC machinery has been controlled by simple rule-based methods. They are simple to implement, um, they are easy to maintain, but they are not very flexible and not very smart. Various model-based methods have also been proposed. Uh, some of them require very accurate building models, which is not often feasible. And some of them also requires human supervisory, which is, of course, quite costly. Nowadays, there are multiple data-driven methods which are made possible by advanced metering infrastructure available to us. In this work, we are going to implement one data-driven method, which is deep reinforcement learning approach for HVAC control. Um, this it is used to minimize energy consumption of the HVAC machinery while still maximizing the thermal comfort uh, that is experienced by the people inside the simulated building. There are two main research goals. The first one is training an intelligent agent which actually tries to solve the aforementioned optimization problem. And the second one is evaluating this agent against some baseline control schemes that are available from our simulation software. Next, we are going to take a look at the background of this work. So there are multiple different modules that are required before reinforcement learning approach can be realized. Um, naturally, we will need a building energy simulation software. In this work, we are going to choose Energy Plus. Uh, Energy Plus supports very extensive uh, functionality. It also supports um, extending the simulator so that we can communicate with the simulator, which is naturally very important in this work. We will, of course, need the reinforcement learning program. And in our case, it's going to be a custom Python program, which leverages some familiar Python libraries, which are used in various machine learning problems. And of course, this 
reinforcement learning program and also the simulator, the Energy Plus simulator, need to be linked together in order for them to communicate with each other. And for this reason, we are going to use building control virtual test bed. Next, I'm going to show, show you the high level architecture view of the system. And on the right side in the image, we have a red box, which represents the simulation program. And on the very left side, we have the reinforcement learning program. In between, we have the buildings control virtual testbed mediator, which acts in a similar manner as a simulink. So it basically mediates the communication modules. And the information flow is depicted by the black arrows in the image. Um, information flow from right to left are the building state measurements. So things like temperature, uh, humidity, things like that. And the information flow from left to right are the control signals which are uh, decided by the reinforcement learning agent based on the measurements that were just received from the simulator. I'm going to show you a similar picture, uh, just showing uh, a little bit different view. So on the right side, we have the Energy Plus simulator. In this case, it's going to be a simple building exactly like that. In the middle, we have the BCV TV, which acts as a mediator and it resembles Simulink. And on the left side, we have the reinforcement learning program, which is composed of multiple different modules inside the program, as can be seen in the picture. Um, but we are not going to delve deep into that in this presentation. Next, we are going to take a look at the experiment setup. So with this architecture, we could decide any algorithm basically, but in this work, have decided to use deep Q network DQN uh, for this learning purpose. The use of DQN is inspired by its superhuman performance observed in some Atari games in 2015. Uh, DQN employs artificial neural networks for function approximation, which is very useful in our case where the state space is going to be very large. We, DQN also employs experience replay memory, which makes it able to learn from previous learnings, uh, which really speeds up learning process compared to traditional reinforcement learning methods. For exploration slash exploitation trade-off, we are going to use linear epsilon decay function. And as an objective function or reward function, we are going to take in account both the energy cost, so the energy that was used by the HVAC machinery, and also the work performance costs, which stems from suboptimal thermal conditions inside the building. The energy costs are calculated by just multiplying the power usage with current electricity price. And the work performance cost is calculated by a model which depicts how work performance deteriorates when we move away from the opt optimal temperature zone. There are a variety of other hyperparameters related to DQN, but we are not going to discuss them in this presentation. Our simulation software supports weather files and weather files are used especially when we want to run some period of simulation. So in this work, each agent we are going to train is trained with the full year of 2013 in Helsinki. So we are going to have a nice winter and nice summer and also the spring and autumn. In order to save some time, Agents are validated with only the first half of 2014 of Helsinki weather. The time step decided for this work is five minutes. So 
it basically means that every iteration every iteration in the simulation represents five minutes of time in the simulated world. This means that there are approximately 105,000 training iterations per one year of 365 days. Due to inefficiency with the communication between the reinforcement learning program and the simulator, simulating one year takes nearly three hours of time. And of course, if we want to validate half a year on top of that, it's around four and a half hours of time. The experiment setup continues with uh, defining the feature vector. And in this work, the feature vector is composed of uh, various simulation measurements. We have the current indoor temperature, current heating rate, current cooling rate. We have the number of simulated people that are currently in the simulated building. This is important, of course, when we want to calculate the work performance loss. Then we have the current wind speed. We have the current wind direction. Also, we have information about the solar diffuse radiation rate. And then we are going to use Nord Pool 2019 data on electricity spot price. And this electricity spot price is going to be used also when we are calculating the electricity cost for any given time step. The action vector consists of temperature set points for heating and cooling. In this work, the agent does not control the power output of the HVAC machinery, but the agent actually controls the temperature set points. The temperature range is from plus 15 Celsius to plus 25 Celsius with 0.2 Celsius resolution. And this means that we have 51 different possible actions for each time step. Next, we're going to lay out the experiments. First, we are going to do configuration grid search. We are going to find the optimal number of hidden layers and also the optimal size for each layer. Due to the aforementioned latency and inefficiency in, in, in the communication between the simulation software and reinforcement learning program, each train and validate cycle takes roughly four and a half hours, which limits our grid search resolution quite a bit. After this experiment, we are going to evaluate the best performing agent against two different uh, baseline strategies that are provided by the simulation software. So let's start with the configuration grid search. In total, we are going to train 15 agents. We have five agents with one hidden layer with different node sizes. We have five configurations with two hidden layers with different uh, layer sizes. And then we have five configurations with three hidden layers. We are go going to train and validate each agent. And we are going to select the agent which produced the highest cumulative reward over the fixed validation period. The results of this grid search are displayed here. Here you can see the 15 different agents, and on the y-axis we have the cumulative reward. The highest cumulative reward was achieved by agent number eight with significant margin. Agent number eight has two hidden layers. Layer one is size 100 and layer two is size 100. There are a couple of learnings from this experiment. We have learned that topologies with only one hidden layer do not react to occupancy trend fluctuations. We have also learned that adding the third layer does not result in improved performance over simpler topologies. Here is the reasoning for these findings. On the right hand side in the upper right corner, we have the occupancy trend used in this work. Here we can see four days, nights in between, and a weekend and then five more days. And this is the weekly cycle 
of the occupancy trend in the simulation. In the figure on the left side, we have runs from one to five, and we can see that for the whole validation period, their strategy was to set seeding set point to a fixed value and just maintain that. It is clear that the agent was not able to react to the occupancy trend, and the reasonable way to react to occupancy trend would be to lower the set point during the nights and weekends because of low occupancy. And of course, find the optimal heating set point for the days when there are actually people inside the building. The runs 6 to 10 are displayed in the middle. We can see that some agents found a way to react to the occupancy trend changes, but some did not. For example, the dark blue did not react to occupancy trends very well. And on the other hand, the light blue reacts to the occupancy trend very well. On the right side, runs 11 to 15, we have the three layer configurations, and we can see that they have also learned to react to the changes in the occupancy trend. However, as we saw, run number eight performed the best, and none of the runs from 11 to 15 were able to match that cumulative reward. So we are going to choose agent number eight as the best candidate and move on to baseline comparison. The simulation software used in this work provides some baseline strategies. The first baseline is a very simple one. Throughout the whole validation period, the heating set point is going to be 18.3 Celsius and the cooling set point is going to be 23.9 Celsius. This leaves a dead band of 5.6 degrees Celsius. The baseline two is very similar, but with different set point values. Next, we are going to run the validation period again for the same agent, calculate the total energy consumption. And we are also going to run the same validation period for baseline one and baseline two, and also calculate the total energy consumption for these strategies. In the results, we can see that baseline one used total energy of little over 90 gigajoules. Baseline two with a smaller deadband used 108.3 gigajoules. Agent number eight, using the deep reinforcement learning strategy, managed to save energy by only consuming 68.09 gigajoules. The main reason why agent number eight is able to save energy compared to baseline one and baseline two is due to the fact that agent number eight cuts energy consumption when the building is not occupied, so on during nights and weekends. Baseline one and baseline two, having immutable set points, cannot cut the energy cost during the night or during the weekends. So as a summary, agent number eight achieves 24.4% reduction against baseline one and 37.1% energy consumption reduction against baseline two. Moving on to the results summary, the best network topology found in this work is two hidden layers of 100 neurons each. The agent number eight was able to achieve significant energy savings compared to the available baseline strategies. And as said previously, the energy saving effect is mainly due to the agent's ability to cut energy costs when the occupancy trend is low. In conclusion, a simulation system for HVAC control was created in this work. Using this simulation system, a deep reinforcement learning approach leveraging the deep Q network algorithm was constructed. In the experiments, it was found that the best agent was able to reduce energy consumption significantly to two different baseline strategies. However, there are some serious further research points. Each train and validate cycle in this work took around four and a half hours. Improvements to simulation speed would enable the scientists to perform a better grid search and also perform better search for 
some other hyperparameters used in this work. It would be also interesting to study multi-device coordination and cooperation, where we would have multiple neural networks working on different parts of the building and communicating with each other in some manner. This would also be very relevant if the real-life scenario was realized in the future. Another research point would be to leverage forecasted occupancy and price fluctuation data. In this work, the, for example, the occupancy trend fluctuations were not predicted or forecasted in any manner, but only the current occupancy levels were used. This of course, limits the ability of the agent in a way that, for example, preheating or pre-cooling is not possible. Also, another interesting research topic would be to control the HVAC power instead of the set points of the device. This is a significantly harder problem because in this way also the low-level control of the HVAC device itself would be the responsibility of the agent. This concludes this presentation on my master's thesis on deep reinforcement learning approach for HVAC control. My name is Ilmari Wikström and I want to thank you for the attention.